the first battle here on July 21st uh, of Bull Run or Manassas, uh, I got to the point where Robert Patterson had failed to hold Johnston in the valley, and so Johnston entrained nearly all his troops and had uh, hit most of them here by the 20th uh, and the rest of them by the 21st. In the meantime, McDowell and uh, about 32,000 Union troops had set out from the Alexandria area on July 16th. Now remember, these are untrained troops, 90-day uh, militia for the most part. Uh, a couple of the regiments uh, had already converted to three-year volunteers, but most of them were 90-day militia. In fact, one regiment from Pennsylvania and one artillery battery from another state were marching back toward Washington on the 21st, on the 20th and the 21st, because their time had expired. <laughs> and the time of quite a few of the other regiments would expire over the next couple of weeks. In, uh, the the uh, chief of staff of the Prussian army, Helmut von Moltke, uh, described these American armies in 1861 as two armed mobs chasing each other around the countryside. <laughs> and while this might have been typical Prussian arrogance, there also had a large element of truth to it. Uh, of course, by uh, 1862 or 1863, most of them would be veteran troops who had learned the job of fighting on the job. They were untrained troops by this time, and one of the hardest things for untrained troops is to maintain march discipline and for their officers to uh, impose discipline. <coughs> and so there were all kinds of delays uh, as the Union troops moved out from the Washington area uh, to the Centerville area where they were going to deploy for this attack. Uh, one division, or part of one division, uh, had been ordered to uh, uh, what was called in those days to feel the enemy, that is to try to probe the enemy position, uh, find out where they were, uh, and what they found out was that Beauregard's troops had put, uh, Beauregard had put troops uh, next to, on the, on the south side, or the, actually it's the west side, southwest side, of all the fords up and down Bull Run. Now you look at Bull Run and you can really walk across this river anywhere. It's shallow, uh, except when it's in flood, then they can have some pretty serious floods. Uh, but you'll also notice as you look at it that the banks are very steep. Uh, and what you need for an effective ford is an area where wheeled vehicles as well as animals and individuals can get down to the, the stream and then back up the other side. Now Bull Run is portable at several places. So Beauregard had to have troops, and most of them down river from where we are, to guard against the crossings here. Originally, McDowell was going to try to go around his flank on the east side which is the direction of Manassas Junction, the railroad junction, which was the real objective of the Union, uh, uh, pro, uh, the Union force. And he sent a division down to probe the Confederate position at Blackburn's Ford, which is not on any of your maps. It's about five fords downstream, three or four miles downstream, the point of the direction I'm pointing. And uh, exceeding his orders, General Tyler got his troops involved in a fairly substantial firefight with a brigade commanded by General James Longstreet. Uh, and they were eventually repulsed. But one thing that uh, McDowell did learn from this probe was that Beauregard had really posted strong defenses on all of the fords down that direction toward Manassas itself. So if McDowell was going to force his way across the stream and was going to flank the Confederate position, which is what he intended to do, he had to explore the possibility of doing it upstream from here. Because at that time, the farthest upstream the Confederates had any defensive position was defending this bridge. So he spent another couple of days uh, personally scouting the roads 
and paths and fords upstream. And if you look on map one, I'm sorry, map two, the second map, 